I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I'm going to show you how to install the push button switches and the LEDs on the control panel that we've been working on. After that, we'll go ahead and make some solder connections in preparation for wiring the control panel to the accessory decoder. And that'll pretty much wrap up for the day. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, I've uh, attached the graphic overlay that we created earlier uh, to the box that serves as the base for our control panel. I've got it on here, it's very stable, and I've got it all cleaned up, so let's go ahead and proceed with adding the LEDs and the push buttons. Now, as you can see, I've already added a few just to get started. So let's go ahead and go through the process of first adding a uh, push button. These are pretty straightforward, as you might expect. Um, they are a uh, quarter inch, they're sized to fit in a quarter inch hole. They come with this uh, lock washer, which I don't use. Um, it's, it gets on there tight enough. So I don't know how much of that you can see. Basically, it's a fairly straightforward uh, threaded neck here and a uh, hex nut that goes on top to hold it in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start it in this one here. It's very simple. Just put it in here. And because the threads are a little bit larger than the quarter inch size, you can literally just twist it into position and the threads will bring it on up through there. And that gives it a nice tight fit. So you can see it's, it's coming up through the uh, upper surface, through the outer surface here. And then, very simple matter, assuming I can pick it up, to drop the um, nut over the top of that little red button and then just screw it down into position. And then you can just tighten it up with your fingers usually. And that's it. So, that's it. That's ready to go. Very easy, simple process. Um, you might find that if you've, uh, if you've drilled your, your hole slightly undersized, that a, um, a round file like this one here are, can be very useful in creating a slightly larger hole. Okay, let's talk then about adding the LEDs to the display. Okay, so I've, uh, I've zoomed in to give you a closer look at the process for installing these LEDs. Now, the, the little black clips that I use here for the mounting process are sized specifically for this job. And I got those from allelectronics.com as well. All of the parts that I'm using here, as far as I remember, came from All Electronics. And I will include the part numbers uh, in the description. This little uh, device, the clip, mounting clip, has four pieces that make up this skirt. So if you squeeze those in together, it gets it to where it uh, will fit into the opening a little bit easier. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and do a green one first. Um, it's just a matter of trying to get it into the opening. Okay, and then once you've got it there, you just push down. So it's a simple mount like that, okay? Now, with the green one, it's a very easy job to, from the back side, just push it into position. Use your fingernail on the outside of the flange to hold it in place as you push this in. And it's going to pop in there. Excuse me a second. And you can see, maybe, the head is sticking up above the layer of the air area of this clip. Okay, so that's finished for the green one. Now, the red one is a little bit different because in the past I have gotten two different types of red LEDs from 
all electronics. You can see here, this one here has a pronounced flange. I doubt you can see that, but my fingernail catches on it, as you can see. Here, this one, my fingernail barely catches. It has hardly any flange here at all. And that makes a big difference when it comes to mounting it. This one will go in uh, just like the green LED that I showed you a moment ago. This one will not. That little flange is just big enough to force the skirt on the clip out and you won't be able to, to get it in. Consequently, what you need to do is put the LED into the skirt first, like so. It just pops right in there. Get it in far enough so that the head is sticking out of the top of this clip. And then, working from the top side of the board, put it in. And get it in there and get it started. I think it's okay. And then Using your piece of brass tubing that I uh, showed you how to make to uh, cut the, uh, or to punch the holes, place that over the top and use it to push the mounting clip and LED into the hole firmly. And you end up with a nice surface mount installation with the head sticking up. So that is all there is to it. Um, it can be a fidgety process. It takes a few minutes to get all this ready. I've done a total, I've counted last night, I've done a total of 85 of these uh, LED installations on the control panels here. So it's something you can do. Um, I wouldn't try to sit down and do it all in one sitting. That would get kind of old and tedious fast. Okay, so we've got those installed. With with crossovers, you have four LEDs to install, okay? Here's one I've left open to show you. But with this one up here at the top, uh, you can see you've got two greens and two reds. And you want that because in order to show the direction of travel through this switch, I want the green here and the green here. Okay, because it's associated with this turnout. And then there's another turnout here. So you've got four colors to work with. Okay? In putting these in proper orientation for soldering and for wiring them electronically, you need to have the long legs of the red opposite the short leg for the green and vice versa. The long leg of the green opposite the short leg here of the red one. And what that's going to do is when you change polarity, one will come on and then when you throw polarity the other way, the other one will come on. Now what I do uh, with this is I bring the red and the green together Bend them over a little bit, like so, okay, and move some stuff out of the way. Using a pair of hemostats or needle nose pliers, whichever you have handy, go ahead and twist these. Be careful not to pop them out of the board again. But the idea is to get them twisted together uh, now, and later we'll, so we'll make solder connections. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Okay, I think that one's pretty well wrapped up. Sometimes it's easier to do these with your fingers. But at any rate, just bring them over one another and then twist them, okay, like that. Now, before you go on, let's do a quick test and make sure that they light up properly, okay. What I have here 
is a standard battery holder. These are double A cells. They're one and a half volts each, so you get a total of three volts out of this, which is enough to light up these LEDs. So what I'm going to do is take a clip and I'll attach these to one of these we've wired together with the red and the black. Okay, And you'll see that the red lights up. Now let's reverse it. Now the green lights up. That's what we want. Always test these to make sure that you've wrapped the right legs together. Okay. Remember, it's always the long leg to the short leg, long leg to the short leg, or positive to negative and positive to negative. Okay, one thing I want to point out, on LEDs, the long leg is positive and the shorter leg is negative. Also, okay, you probably won't be able to see this. I doubt I can see it, but this is the short leg, this is the long leg. So the negative leg, the short one, uh, right up against it, there is a flat spot cast into the side of the LED case. So that's another way to tell negative. Sometimes you will get LEDs where the two legs are the same length. And in those cases, you have to look for that flat spot indicating negative, and the other leg will be positive. In this case, you can see the positive is longer than the negative. Okay. Now, um, we've got that set up. We've got these wired. They work properly. Now, let's go ahead and look at how that works for a, um, for a, a crossover. So let me go ahead. I'm going to connect these two off camera, and then I'll show you how this works. Okay, I've gone ahead and connected the long and the short wires together. And because you want the green uh, LED on both sides of the crossover to come on at the same time and the two reds to come on at the same time, we're going to have to do some jumper wiring. So you need to figure that out in advance. So what I've done here then is gone ahead and connected these. Let me connect this red to this green. And you can see, I don't have these wired correctly. I've got a red and a green on, not two greens or two reds. So that means I have to flip the jumpers. Consequently, I'm going to take this green jumper and swap it with this red jumper. Let me do them one at a time here. Okay, now let's test it. Okay, we're good to go. I have two reds on. Now, if I reverse the polarity, clip that one to that one and this one to this one, you can see both of my greens are on. That's what you want. And that's how you need to have it when we get ready to do the wiring. So, you need to do this kind of tip with crossovers. It's a little bit more complicated because you have to do this testing up front. Um, these clip leads, by the way, I buy these in bulk, again, from um, All Electronics. And I'll put that on the, uh, put their part number also on the description. These are handy to have around for these kind of test jobs, as well as doing all kinds of other testing under the layout. And I've written about that in Model Railroader in the past. Okay, so we know that we need to run a jumper wire between the two inside pairs and the two outside pairs. So, got to remember that when we get ready to do the um, the soldering. Okay, and then once you're done with the wiring, 
or once you're done making those twist, just clip, clip those off with a pair of uh, snips. Like so. Now, those are all ready. So what we're going to want to do then is solder these together. So let me get the soldering iron set up and I'll be right back and we'll proceed with soldering. Um, I've already attached one of the uh, one of the jumpers here and uh, at one leg and we got both legs good and soldered. That's good and tight. As you can see this is just a, a plain piece of stranded wire. I've already pre-tinned the ends of it. Well there's one that needs a little bit more solder so by tinning, all you all I mean is you're placing some solder on the ends in advance, and that just makes the soldering process go much, much smoother and faster when you're making final connections. What I'm going to do is solder this long jumper to this. One here. Okay. And we get the other jumper and here. Then we're going to want to just, you know, a little bit of solder on each one of these connections where we've uh, twisted the wires together. And then those are ready for when we get to the point where we're going to make the final connections with the wires to go to the accessory decoder. So now one more test. And you can see both of my reds are on. And both of my greens are on. You can see them through the backs there. Okay, And it's a good idea to go ahead and test all of your connections. Make sure you're getting a good solid electrical connection. No bad joints. Okay, Everything's working fine. So now that's ready to be wired up to the uh, accessory decoder. And we'll get into that in the next episode. So by next time I will have added these other two crossovers in here, got them all wired up, and we'll be good to go to make the final connections to the accessory decoder. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up for today. Next time we'll take a look at the Switch 8 accessory decoder and I'll give you some tips on how to prepare it for installation on the layout and hooking it up to the control panel itself. I'll also talk about programming it uh, for the type of operations that we'll be using it with. One more thing before I leave though, I want to ask you one more time to subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos in this and other series in the future. That's about it, so thanks for watching and I hope you have a great week.